Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DI. I just want to do a bit of a deep dive into the count rows function here and just show you how how useful it can actually be. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of you who are who are sort of just starting out with Power BI or or have, or have been been using it for a, for a little while might not be fully using the count rows function as well as you you you, you probably could. Now. There's a big there's there's the a big concept here around virtual tables and where you can actually utilize these in Power BI. Okay, and that's what I want to work through today. We're going to go through an example here, and then I'm going to show you how we can I guess work out that it's correct by doing a bit of auditing um, and a few other calculations over here. So it's going to be a really good deep dive into count rows, but also some other other ranking type functions as well, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, so when you generally use count rows, right? You think okay. I can input a table parameter in here. Okay, so I'll show you. I'll show you that by you say count counts the number of rows in a table, and it says table. Okay, and so you think, okay, well I've got to put a full physical table in there like that to go and get uh, uh, an answer, and that and that's cool. That's, that's totally legitimate if if, if if what you're looking for is say total orders, which I'm looking for here, right? And so what I've got here is I'm I'm trying to work out my total orders per day. So how many how many transactions happen per day or how many orders happen per day? Every single order is just one row in my data set. So I can use something as easy as this to calculate how many orders orders we have. Okay. But what I want to show you today is that you can get far more advanced with what you place inside of here because you are not restricted to just inputting a physical table in here. You can actually put any type of virtual table in there with any type of um, manipulated, you know, table with a you know, uh, uh, manipulated table based on some parameters that you put in it. Okay, and, and I want to show you really some so two two examples of how this can be done. Okay, one one's slightly easier, and the other is just a little bit more advanced. And and I'm gonna, we're going to work work through those. Okay, so what I wanted to show you as a first example is I wanted to show you here how many orders or how many orders did we have on any particular date that were above 15,000 for that particular order. So so the organization here that we're running this analysis over sells quite high value products, right? Maybe they sell cars or something like that. And so I want to show how many orders on any day were above 15,000. Okay? So what we can do here is we can do this. We can use count rows here, but instead of putting the sales table, we can put a filtered sales table inside of this function. Okay, and so basically, for every single date here, I want to work through every single sale that we had on each different date, and I want to work out which rows have revenue have revenue greater than fifteen thousand. And if they do, we we could probably put greater than or equal to fifteen thousand there. Um, and if they if this evaluates too true, so if, if the, a particular um, order has a revenue greater than fifteen thousand, that will evaluate to true, and that uh, particular row in that table will remain. And then by the end of it, well, after we've gone through every single row here, we will have a table of just those sales over fifteen thousand. And then we just go and count rows. We go and count the rows left in this virtual table. Okay, this is the big learning here this is a virtual table okay we you we're starting with a physical table but we've then gone and totally changed the the shape of it based on the parameters or the logic that we place in here in this case greater than or equal to fifteen thousand. and so that's why we have um different results here and you can see i put it in a visualization as well so what's cool here is that you could then for example go and measure go and do some measure branching and then say okay what is the percentage of sales we have above uh, 15,000 on any particular day. And you could run that analysis from there. And all it would be is a simple divide of this, divided by that. So here you can quickly start seeing how you can st just simply use count rows here. And, um, and, and it, it simplifies, if I feel, your formula quite, quite significantly, okay? In terms of like what you need to write, it's quite, really quite simple. Okay, now let's move to a harder one. I think you'll find inter interesting working through because it is quite advanced. So what I wanted to then work out, I wanted to work out how many orders on any particular day 
came from our top 50 overall customers. Okay, so let's go and have a look how many customers we have. I think we've got a lot in this particular data set, right? We have 3,603 customers in this particular data set, right? And, and the way I've set up the, the data, I think they, they, all make, they all make purchases at some point. Okay, and so I'm looking over um, this particular time frame here. Actually, no, how I've set it up, it doesn't actually matter what time frame you're looking at. It's looking at from the beginning of time, basically. Okay, and so basically on any particular day, I want to work through every single sale. I want to look at every single sale on that particular day, and I want to assess was any of those sales to a top 50 customer for, based on sales from the beginning of time. Okay. You could obviously rearrange this a little bit, but this is just the logic that I've got here. I'm going to show you what, what you can do. Okay, so look at what I've done here. Again, I've used count rows as our main function here. We're going to, but we're going, to, we're going to create a virtual table in a very different way, and we're going to use the calculate table function. Okay. So what's going to happen is I started with my initial sales table here, but I want to I, I want to change the shape of this table to only look at my top 50. I'm using top in here, my top 50 customers, right? My top 50 customers based on the sales that they have made th from the beginning of time. Okay, so all of their sales that we have it recorded in our database. Okay. And how I've done that is I've said, okay, we'll count up total revenue, but disregard any filters that come from date. Okay, I don't care what date we are looking at here. I want to look at all of my customers' revenue in the in its entirety. And that's how I'm going to break down my top 50 customers from the beginning of time. And then my sales table is going to be quite significantly truncated, right? Because we're only looking at 50 customers now. And then so at every single date, we're only looking at, say, sales for, from 50 cust uh, top 50 customers, and you'll find that those customers didn't make many sales on, on, on a lot of days. And then, for example, here we go. Here's one customer that made a sale who was in our top 50 on this particular date. Okay, so how, how do we then know? Say, say, we, say, say we wrote this, this formula. How do we even know that this is right? Okay, so I, I, I even wanted to check myself, even though I thought, in fact, the logic was correct when I wrote it. I obviously wanted to check, okay, does this actually make sense? Okay. And so what you can do is you could literally click on click on a day here. And then I've got a list of my top 50 customers here. And we could work through the list and try and work out, okay, well, which customer actually was it? And in this particular case, it's Charles Henderson. He was the one customer in our top 50 who purchased on this particular day. Okay, and so I'm selected on here now. We would find him somewhere down here, Charles Henderson. Here we go, Charles Henderson purchased 9,983 um, on that particular day. And he also ranks, it looks like, in our sort of top uh, top 15 as well of our customers as well, uh, as our customers, yeah. Then what we could also do is I've set up I've set up this particular um, you'll show, you'll see here I've used I've set up this particular visualization to only show the top 50 customers, and this is a technique I've shown a few times. So basically, I'm counting up my total revenue of my top 50 customers based on their revenue, and but in this case, funnily enough, this is actually um, this is probably actually filtered. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. This is probably filtered by this particular. Um, our slicer here so if I wanted to go like for like probably what I wanted to do here was go total revenue all dates as well just just for a more like for like comparison of our um, of our of our formula here so what I could also do is I could select say one of these customers and then go and have a look okay so in this particular month this Frank Larson actually um, on this particular day they actually purchased so 7th to the 3rd so you see here seventh of the third fifty thousand. Yep, and then if I select on here though, you'll see that um, so Frank Larson actually purchased, but also these two customers in our top fifty purchased as well, and that's why we have three. So pretty interesting, right? Pretty interesting. Uh, this this is this is seriously interesting stuff. You know, we've we've covered a lot there, but I, the main thing I wanted to show you just has how how versatile count rows can actually be. And you're not, and how you're not restricted just to a physical table. You can put pretty complex table logic or table functions inside here, depending on what insight that you want. 
Um, and you know what's interesting here is we're using this is a table function, but also this is a table function as well. And so the, and this is a table function. So there's a lot. There's quite a lot. There's quite a lot of um, really interesting techniques wrapped up in these in these formulas. So hopefully you enjoyed learning about them. I think I think we'll wrap things up there. This one's gone on a little bit longer than I wanted, but it's worth it. It's really really cool to talk about these sort of things, and hopefully you're learning a lot from it. If you are if you are learning a lot from these uh, this tutorial um, and can see how you can implement it, then definitely throw it a like. Really appreciate it as always. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Lots of uh, lots of great content coming out here. Okay, all the best.